Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. As you can see from the title, we're going to go over my reads from April 2024. I didn't read that much this month, to be honest, but I've had some interesting reads. A lot of volume ones and yeah, I've discovered uh, a random volume I pick up has become one of my favorite reads so far. So let's get right into it. All right. First, I continued Yashahime, Princess of Demon. If you saw my last reading log, you know already that I didn't make the smartest decision when I picked this one up because, um, well, I should have done some more research. I started reading this without having read anything from Rumiko Takahashi. So uh, there were a lot of unanswered questions for me that probably should have been answered. But nonetheless, it has me very interested, not only in this story, but in the works from Jumiko Takahashi as well. So I think it's actually delivered on its purpose. So yeah, the main three characters, they are very fierce, they're very interesting, they have a lot of personality. Um, the character design is great as well. The battle scenes are very interesting. And of course... What makes this very interesting for me is that not only has the main trio caught my eye, but also um, their fathers. So they're the half-brothers Inuyasha and Seshomaru. Because he seems like a very complicated character that has been very black or white and has been, let's be honest, an ass. But then there's one human in particular, he totally falls for her and she makes him see... Uh, that there is another way but still he has to uh, make sure that they're safe and there are certain decisions that he needs to make in order to do so that's what I gather from it so far so uh, yeah very interesting all right next well actually <laughs> before I picked up Yashahime <laughs> I got this random volume one of Mao in one of the bundles I got you know, you've seen by now that sometimes I get a random bundle for an amazingly good price. And it makes me pick up uh, works that I wouldn't have gravitated towards otherwise. This was one of them. It was a very interesting volume one. But after reading this, I will definitely continue it, but not right away. I will think I will go more canonically. So, next. I have read the first volume of Dr. Stone, very uh, pleasant volume one, um, the art was really great and uh, well the plot is about um, teenagers that are in high school and they're having some classes and suddenly well, everyone is petrified. Everyone has a layer of stone around them and they have been frozen now for well, it has been uh, thousands and thousands of years. I don't know exactly how long. Um, but one day, our main character, Dr. Stone, he wakes up. So he has to figure out um, what made the stone dissolve. But he petrifies his best friend. And together, they want to rebuild humanity. So because he's very smart, he already knows what triggered all these main event points in humanity. And yeah, I think uh, this was a manga uh, focused on making um, teenagers more interested in science programs. And in my opinion, they have succeeded. I was very intrigued. I was already um, interested in science, of course, but... That's why I picked it up, but uh, I think they had a very playful way of adapting um, every breakthrough. Seeing it unfold and having it him explain it uh, to his friend was very interesting. So, uh, yeah. All right, next. I have read um, Beauty and the Beast Bell's Tale uh, from Tokyo Pop. Um, this one, well... If you've seen um, the movie from Disney, it's very similar. It follows uh, the story really closely. The art is beautiful. 
I love my Disney princess story, so I was very happy with it. I love this adaptation, and I'm very intrigued to read the uh, the version of the Beast's Tale. Uh, I assume it's from his uh, point of view. Another volume one was Snow White with the red hair. I was really intrigued by it. Of course, I saw Snow White. I was like, okay, Disney. It's right here. Okay, it's going to be a different adaptation. And uh, yeah, it's a story about Shirayuki. She is a uh, napotigary herbalist, the prince of her kingdom, which is a notorious playboy who treats his women like toys, has set his eyes on her. And well, safe to say she wasn't really that keen on it. So she ran away. She entered another kingdom. And there um, she stumbled upon another guy. He said some interesting things to her that made her aspire that her dreams are valid. So they embark on many adventures together as well. But of course, uh, there are many people uh, amongst his um, stature that don't like them being together. So uh, yeah, very interesting. I would love to pick up more volumes. I've heard that there are a lot of volumes to collect. So uh, I'm really happy to hear that. So we'll definitely continue this series. All right, next I have finished this whole series. It's about the demon Ororon. I think it's supposed to be an experimental read. And uh, the story is intriguing. And uh, the drawings itself are intriguing as well. It really feels experimental. It's pretty old, I think, as well. I think it's even out of print by now. I do have um, the same problems with this one as I had with Meripuri. Uh, the demon Oron just enters uh, Shiaki's uh, life somehow by accident. They were not supposed to meet at all, but life has its ways. She, He was wounded. She immediately uh, heals him. And he, without any shame, announces his son as, Hey, how are you? I'm the demon Oron. <laughs> she was uh, pretty much in disbelief with go back to what I what, what my little issue with it was is because he's well over 100 years old but he states specifically that he has the the physics of a 23 year old man but our main character Shiaki she is 15 years old and their um, relationship that they develop is more of a romantic nature so that's mm, not really my thing other than that shiaki is um she's the daughter of the archangel michael and of a human mother and of course that's a mortal sin and our demon or Oron is not just a demon he's actually the king of hell so they both have it um, it's really that easy. They're both alone, both abandoned, both um, both betrayed a lot. Um, they both have bounties on their heads because of who they are. And they deal with it in two opposite ways. He deals it with uh, survival of the fittest. I have to survive no matter what it means, no matter how it makes me feel. I just have to survive. They don't get to win. And she's very compassionate. So she's a very uh, pacifist person. But she also uh, wants to help everyone, wants to save everyone. And in a world full of death and despair and everyone who's out to get you, that makes for some really interesting uh, dialogues, really interesting questions of, is it worth it to keep your uh, morals high? in those times or is that what makes it worth it if you don't lose your morals so in that way the story felt experimental to me and made me um, forget the issues I had with the story because it was um, a take on morality spirituality 
philosophical even for me sometimes that um, was really worth to read though it made me wonder about these questions that I just posed myself of what what's the right approach what makes it worth it or is it just all lost and despair when you come across a situation like that and your whole life is just like that um I think the humanity does stay very important, but I'm not sure how optimistic and naive that take may be when um, life is just about survival. And we know about science that survival of the fittest is what makes us who we are, what makes us uh, survive this long, because we adapt and we survive in harsh circumstances if need to so yeah i can go on and on and on about this for hours that's what made um me want to talk about this series because it was very interesting and if you can look over the age gap things and just focus on okay it's experimental it's posing questions and putting them in situations that maybe um just unanswered questions that make you think and sometimes i love a story that just makes me turn my brain off cute girls doing cute things being fierce going on the adventure i really like those stories as well as well but sometimes a story that really makes me stop and think those get me the most so uh yeah go ending with that i would say it would be worth your read. All right, enough yapping for me. Next, we have the special Louvre edition from Naoki Urasawa Mujirushi, The Sign of Dreams. Very interesting read, but it's written by Naoki Urasawa, so of course it is. I loved all of his works that I read. Of course, I didn't read all of them. Not all of them are in English even, so... That isn't really possible for me <laughs> uh, because I only prefer reading physical manga digitally. I tried a few times and it's just not my jam. So about this volume, this short story, this one shot, very, very interesting. It's about a businessman, businessman who was very successful, but then, of course, he makes a few stupid decisions. And that made him go lose his wife, lose his, he owns the company, so he loses his whole company, he goes bankrupt, he goes poor, he really is at rock bottom. And um, yeah, he's he ends up uh, close to suicidal. But then a journey appeared through the Louvre and they met someone. So he's interested in the works of Johan Vermeer. There's one in particular that this whole story will be about. And that's the Kantwerkster. Or in English translated, it would be the Lace Maker. Right, I forgot. So uh, yeah, it's about that specific painting. And of course, in typical Naoki Urasawa style, it's very mysterious. It's very angsty. It's very... Uh, plot twist here and there, everywhere. It's all over the place, but still very coherent at the same time. I can't really explain it. It's just you cannot take your eyes off the pages. You just have to devour the whole volume at once. And that's the best way I can describe it. So, next. We have The Summer Hikaru Died, Another <laughs> volume one. It's about a, a guy who lost his friend. Well, his friend went missing when he entered the woods. He already knew when some time went by that his friend had died. But then his friend pops up again. But he often um, questioned that if this person or creature was actually its friend and who is it? Is it evil? Is it hostile? Or is it friendly? And he tries to be friends to this creature and it seems to have taken a liking to him. So yeah, he's really um, 
twisted uh, in what he should do with it because even though he knows it's wrong, even though he knows it could end him because he sometimes has to face the fact that his friends have died and this creature could be the reason why his friend has died, so he could be next. Uh, but he still isn't ready to let his friend go. So this is the best way to hang on to him. Or is he just foolish trying to hold on to something that's maybe gone. But it's not completely gone because it still feels so real. So uh, yeah, very interesting read. Very interesting volume one. I'm interested in how it continues. Next, we have... I already talked about this uh, in my haul. Solar Leveling Volume 1. It's about a guy who lives in a world where your magical power, how much you have of it, uh, ranks you. So uh, he's the lowest rank. He's actually even practically below the lowest rank. Uh, some even wonder why he's even allowed um, to go on these hunts because his uh, magical value is just so low it is even ridiculous so whilst clearing one of the lowest dungeons they enter a different corner and they see another door so the dungeon isn't cleared yet and of course it takes a twist it wasn't the lowest dungeon it the entrance to it this was very low and hidden within it was the most powerful dungeon you could come across on and we see this creature this kind of god and while that story takes on from there is a very interesting well encounter let's say that last but not least i already went over this in my haul as well but i'm actually so addicted to this story i cannot wait to pick up more there are four volumes in total only two have been released in english yet the next one, spoiler alert, will be in one of these halls uh, of May. It's about a girl and she gets bullied severely on a school trip. She encountered through the bullying our, our vampire and he takes a liking in her. Well, because she isn't really that lucky always. She's very clumsy and because that clumsiness situation happened, they actually entered into a contract without even knowing that it happened. Well, he knew it immediately. She didn't realize it because it was just all an accident. But it was a happy accident, like Bob Ross would say, because he, even though he's a vampire, he has to be the most kind, uh, the most human to her that she has ever experienced. And she is a shaman as well. Well, she's a daughter of a shaman. She really isn't herself but it becomes clear that the journey that her mom is on that uh, her mom is trying to protect her from that and there may be some lingering um, duties that her daughter has to fulfill as well that she has to take the same path and our vampire doesn't know how to deal with it as well because usually shamans aren't really fond of his kind um, but yeah he tries to protect her he is uh, her only friend and um, going on this journey together, seeing the depths of the bullying she has to go through, but seeing her unfold, um, how happy she is, how bubbly she is, how excited she is uh, when she is around him is uh, very endearing to see. So very interesting story. Um, yeah. I just want to continue reading it. I was so bummed when I was done with this volume. I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. And on that note, those were my reads from April 2024. I made, just as last time, a few sketches. Not as much as last time because I'm not sure it's really the content you're looking for from me. So I made one from... Um, Neighborhood story. I made one from Apothecary Diaries or Mamao. I made one from a Jotaro and a stand. And I made one from Itadori and 
Sukuna from Jujutsu Kaisen. So uh, yeah, I hope you like those and I like doing them. So yeah, if you have any recommendations, if you have anything you would like to see me cover, please leave them in the cover comments. Um, I like to find new stories that are so exciting because like this one, like that one, and they have been the most interesting reads actually from all of these. So yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye.